In fact, this in morning. just a moment, we're going to hear from the man in charge of tracking down and capturing the two convicted murderers who escaped from prison in Florida mm -hmm. using that sophisticated forged document scam. What he says the convicts <laughs> told officers right after they were caught. That's coming up. But we do start with the final moments of that massive manhunt. Here's where it all went down at a Florida hotel. This is where the dangerous escapees were caught. The men who tricked officials into letting them go are now back behind bars. ABC's Steve Osinsami has the very latest from right where they were captured in Panama City, Florida. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Paula. It was like a scene in a movie. Police racing up to this little motel, finally catching up to those two convicted killers who had been here since Wednesday. It boggles the mind how they got this far, but this morning they're in a county jail waiting to get set back to the big house. 5.20 p.m. Saturday, the Coconut Grove Motel, and police had the place surrounded, all of their guns pointing at room 227. A tip led them here. Inside were those two convicted murderers who made a fool of state law enforcement and correction officials, cooking up forged documents that somehow got them released from serving life sentences with no parole. For the past two days, we've been tracking them here in Panama City, trying to find out what location they were in. We made announcements over our PA systems uh, that they were surrounded, and after about a minute or two, uh, both of the fugitives came out and surrendered to us. Charles Walker and Joe Jenkins, both 34, had nothing to lose. Police warned they could be armed and dangerous. The hotel just 100 miles from the prison they escaped and 350 miles from the jail in Orlando, where they were last seen after boldly registering there as released felons, as if nothing was wrong. Just a few hours before their arrest Saturday, their friends and family were in front of cameras begging them to turn themselves in. Please want you to surrender yourself to someone who you trust, who will bring you back in safety. In 1998, Jenkins killed a father of six in Orlando. And a year later, his partner on the run shot a 23-year-old man to death in Orange County. They walked out of jail with the state's blessings when police say they forged these documents that included a forged signature of Judge Belvin Perry, supposedly ordering corrections officials to set them free. They cut and paste my signature and affixed it to the order. They had to have outside uh, help. Both men have a video first appearance today and afterwards are expected to be handed over to corrections officials who this time probably won't lose them. Dan. Uh, well said. Steve Ozensami, <laughs> thank you. Now for the inside story of the manhunt and the capture, we spoke moments ago with the chief inspector, Frank Cimento, from the U.S. Marshals Service Fugitive Task Force. Chief, we know you got a tip. Can you tell us a little bit more about who gave you the tip and whether you were confident that this was good information? As soon as we did receive the information, we knew it was good information. And we had uh, a lot of our people, two arrest teams, actually converge onto Panama City, uh, the area there, to conduct investigation. When you converged on that hotel, were you bracing for potential violence? And how did it go down? With this situation, both of these escapees were originally charged with homicide, as you're aware, so we definitely were prepared for the worst possible scenario. We decided the best approach was to lock down the hotel and to use a PA system to notify them that they were surrounded, law enforcement was there, and tell them to surrender, which they thankfully did without incident. After all of this, and given their violent histories, were you surprised that this went down without a shot fired? We're not surprised, I was not personally surprised, but I was thankful that it, they did decide to make the right decision and to come out peacefully and with their hands up in the air. We know that these uh, convicts registered in Orlando, but they were ultimately caught in Panama City, which is pretty far away. What do you know uh, about their movements during these five days? We did have tips that came in, numerous tips from when it first went public and thanks to agencies like yourself who got the information out there we received numerous tips from the public that were both in central florida and the panhandle ultimately they were located in panama city and thankfully arrested when you apprehended these two convicts okay. any can you give us a sense of what they were saying to your officers something to this sense of uh, they were relieved it was over they knew once they saw it on the news 
that their scheme was uncovered and they speci specifically said the U.S. Marshals Task Force was looking for them along with the local agencies. They knew their days were numbered. Well, they were right about one thing. The heat was on. Their days were numbered. Uh, Chief Inspector Frank Cimento from the U.S. Marshals Service, we really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. You're welcome, Dan. Thank you. So many questions lingering about this story. How did they pull this off? Did they have outside help? Are there other people pulling the same scheme as mm -hmm. we speak? Look forward to all the details being yep. divulged in the near future.